Our next speaker is Jane Bowditch from uh, Dot Digital, and he's going to talk to us about uh, connection at scale in the new normal. Um, welcome, James. Morning. Thank you for having me. Morning. Um, James has uh, 11 years of experience in the messaging industry, helping retailers, um, gaming companies, and finance providers uh, leverage the power of messaging channels. Um, his focus now is building on the product uh, that helps merchants get the most out of the current and emerging messaging channels. Um, you know, it's going to be exciting to hear that. Please, the audience, if you guys can um, post questions in the chat, that will be great. Um, and then we'll ask James those questions at the end. So over to you, uh, James. Great, thank you very much. And yeah, hi everyone. I'm James, product manager at Dot Digital. And um, for those that don't know, we're an, an omnichannel marketing solution for B2C, B2B, and uh, NFP marketers. And today, I, I want to talk to you about a a new secret weapon, uh, if you like, in in e-commerce. Not only for you know, the times that we that we currently find ourselves in, but we'll also have a look at how it can be implemented in the long term. So please do feel free to ask any questions as we go and I'll be happy to uh, to answer as, as many as I can at the end. So to start with um, a bit about me, um, I'm based in the UK, although Dot Digital do have a, a global presence and as we mentioned, I, I started in the in the SMS industry specifically over uh, 11 years ago now, helping the likes of retailers, gaming companies, finance providers, to understand how they can leverage SMS across their customer journeys and their their customer communications. And as as time has gone on and, and as messaging has evolved, my focus now is on building products that help e-commerce businesses get the most out of current channels such as, as SMS, but also you know, emerging channels, at least from a, a business perspective, such as as WhatsApp. And I'm going to be talking about conversational commerce and I'll, I'll aim to explain what it is first of all and then go on to talk about how businesses can can leverage it to to connect to interact and to engage with their customers and prospects to ultimately create better experiences build trust at scale and give them an idea and, and an understanding about uh, about more uh, more about their their customers and, and what insights can be can be taken from from uh, from conversational commerce interactions so to start with um, a bit of context you know businesses operate in a a, a near perfect competitive market when it comes to to product range and price and you've likely heard of of this notion of of fast, good, and cheap, and and a business can only achieve some of these. You know, you can't be you can't be all of them at the same time. And so, there's a need to find new ways to compete, new competitive advantages to to carve out, and that is through the experience that is created for for customers at at every point along that customer journey and and customer communications and and touch points and if we dive you know, straight into an example um, of of purchasing decision you know lots of lots of choice high priced items and and in the example of of snowboarding equipment it's going to be you know very important that the right product is is chosen and purchased you, know, you don't want to be halfway up a mountain with a a snowboard that that you think is 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 the right one for you and and so the the experience that we desire and that we need with with this business in this example is a conversation a conversation with the experts you know seasoned professionals or seasoned snowboarders who can who can ask us the right questions you know understand our our current levels of ability and, and ultimately make sure that we are are confident in our purchases and 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 maximize our enjoyment and in the case of snowboarding make sure that that our our, our bones remain intact and the in-store experience, the 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 in-person experience, has 
has always been our, our go-to to to get that confidence, to get that reassurance, and and in particular this experience, the experience of having a a one-to-one interaction, a a one-to-one conversation with a member of of the in-store team. It's someone that we can we can speak to, who can talk us through our options, can show us you know, different products, and and answer all of our questions and. It enables us to build a, a rapport and create a, an ongoing affinity and, and connection with that business, particularly for, for, for local stores. And I think this is, this is why we like to go in stores to, to get that, that experience. And for a business, they can create and, and achieve these kinds of feelings between them and their customers so they can build empathy and and trust and and create ongoing you know long-term relationships and really forge an intimacy and affinity that's going to benefit both their customer in terms of the experience and for them as a business in the long term so obviously a potential buzzword alert here the the notion of of the new normal because of course we know and, and we've already talked about it a lot uh, this morning you know, we have over the last 18 months or so been been forced to to change our habits you know getting into a store has become harder and, and for some it's just become plain plain scarier and so our habits have shifted to online more so than than ever before and indeed it, some shoppers may may in fact never want to go back to a a physical store and there's lots of data out there and we've seen lots of data already today and just to draw on a few here you know bizarre voice looked at march 2020 versus march 2019 and saw a 21 percent increase in online orders and and that was you know one to two months uh, into the pandemic at least at least here in the uk and you know most recently the the ons have reported that you know, in january this year online sales were, were at a record high at just over 35%. And a recent report found that, uh, on, uh, a report of online shoppers found that since the, the pandemic began, just under half, so 46% were there for the first time. You know, they were there making a purchase for the first time, crucially that they would usually be doing in person, in, in, in store. So I'm going to focus on how a business can recreate this this one-to-one -one experience, this one-to-one -one conversation experience, and, and ultimately achieve the same feelings that we looked at earlier with their customers when they're not physically in the same space, and how that gives a business the the advantages that they need to compete in that in that perfect market. And we can do that by by leveraging conversational commerce tools. So I'll aim to explain what it is, first of all, and how it can go on to help achieve and generate those positive feelings between a business and its customers and how it can help deliver on, on kind of these three main points you know, from a, a customer perspective, how they can engage with the business and how by by leveraging conversational commerce tools, it can alleviate the uncertainty, the, the indecision, as we saw in our example earlier, that, that, that consumers have about shopping and, and purchasing online and ultimately creates better experiences for them. For a business and from a business perspective, we'll look at how it can solve the problem of, of trying to achieve all that and trying to generate all those feelings at scale and how they can create and build better experiences and get crucial insights into you know, not just customer behavior, but also uh, sentiment and, and feelings that they have about that business, but also about particular products that that business sells. So by way of a, of a definition, conversational commerce ultimately enables online shoppers to have a two-way interaction with a brand 
across different channels. So that could be web, it could be mobile messaging, it could be video, or it could even be voice like, like Google Home. Uh, and I'll say Amazon A and, and hope you know what I mean, because if I, if I say it in full, mine is, is likely to, um, to start talking and interrupting me. But um, hopefully you know what I mean. And, and, and you know, some examples specifically on that are, you know, being able to to reorder your last coffee purchase with Starbucks or, you know, with Domino's being able to build a new order from scratch or or place your most recent order or check your order's status just by simply speaking. Um, but ultimately, these interactions result in some value being exchanged, be it a purchase, be it some advice or some guidance, or be it some peace of mind that that your pizza is on its way, or, or your order is is not too far away. And crucially, those interactions could be with another human, and indeed they they should be, or, or more so now. And, and thinking about how how a business is able to manage this, you know, twenty four seven and at scale by deploying, you know, well orchestrated bot workflows. But ultimately, it means that a consumer can discover a product, can have a conversation with a brand about that product, can purchase that product, or indeed find out the status of an existing order or, or query an existing product from, from anywhere and at any time, be they at home on the laptop, such as the, the image on the left there, or out and about on the go on the bus, uh, such as the, the image on the right. But it all adds to that new layer of experience that is required now to be able to differentiate in that, in that near perfect competitive market. And for me, I think the key goal for, for using conversational commerce is to recreate the, the in-store experience for a consumer whenever and wherever a consumer happens to be. And specifically the experience of talking to a member of the in-store team. So for a business, it's still a chance to have a one-to-one -one interaction with a, a customer and it's still a chance for them to get to know them, to understand them more, to, to provide a better experience kind of both in the moment during the conversation and also thinking about sort of post-purchase, post-conversation, if you like, and the ongoing long-term experience that a consumer has with the business. And of course, that, that in-store member of the team may have different roles depending on, on what you're going into store for and, and what your outcomes are. So maybe you're there to browse without any, any commitment to purchase and, you know, more often than not now, there is a member of the in-store team not too far away. And, and what do they do? Well, they're, they're proactive. They go up to you and they ask you if you need any help or if they can, uh, can, can recommend something. And you, you go because you trust their expertise and, and you trust their knowledge and, and you feel better knowing that, that this is the right item for you because an expert has helped you choose it. And sometimes you just want that, that reassurance of a one-to-one a -one interaction. Maybe you know the products that, that you want to buy that day and you're there to, to find it and seek it out. What do you do if you can't find that product? Again, our in-store member of the team is, is not too far away and you go up to them and you ask them for help. You know, maybe uh, maybe you're on your lunch break or maybe you need to to catch the next bus home so getting the product that you need quickly is is the most important thing and that member of staff is is there to to ultimately make it happen maybe you've ordered an item that that just hasn't arrived so so what do you do you go straight up to the customer service desk for help and Maybe it's you know, you're looking forward to to getting this item. Maybe it's a a present for an upcoming birthday, and so you know you you want to find out where it is, and you need an answer as as soon as possible. And you know, you don't necessarily want to be waiting on a customer service line, or or you don't want to send a a speculative email in the hope that that someone somewhere will will read it at some point. You, know, you get an immediate answer when you do that in person. Or of course, maybe you're there to ask a question about your recent purchase. Maybe you 
uh, you can't work your new phone. And so you go in and, and you ask the experts who can provide you with the help, with the guidance that you need to uh, to be able to enjoy and, and get the most out of your recent purchase. But you know, all of these experiences and all of these 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 outcomes that you have are made better by by trust, your trust in the knowledge, trust in the expertise, the experience and and the commitment of of the in-store staff to to help you achieve what you set out to when you when you visited the store that day. So conversational commerce enables consumers to experience that convenience and the speed and the and get the reassurance and the peace of mind of those in-store interactions at any time and uh, anywhere. And if we go back to looking at our example um, uh, to explain how conversational commerce can help alleviate perhaps the stresses of a purchasing decision, particularly if that is, is hurting you as a business, you know, what, what causes this purchasing decision? What, what leads to low conversion rates, you know, low order values and, and high amounts of churn? Well, we talked earlier, I mean, we looked earlier and, 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 and talked about lots of choice, lots of questions that a shopper may have, especially for, for high value items and items that, that we need to make sure we get the right one for us, such as, as snowboarding equipment. And, you know, a, a lot of money is, is spent getting consumers to a site. So leaving them to discover, to understand and to, to seek out the answers themselves is, is not going to give you the return that you need and, and ultimately will result in a, a poorer uh, experience. So businesses can employ conversational commerce tools uh, such as, as web chat in my example here to essentially become that, that digital member of, of the team. You know, they, they can give them a uniform if you like and, and make sure that they look on brand and, and put them front and center in store, the equivalent of, of that in-store member of staff being ever present. You know, they could put a big welcome, how can I help badge? And, and, and ultimately it's there to, to provide the same experience of walking up to a, a member of staff in store and initiating a, a conversation. So why should this, this digital member of the team be your, your next hire or your, your next employee? Well, they never clock off. They, 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 they're always there and they can be always there um, when a, a consumer wants to engage. So it's kind of shifting it to be on the consumer's terms. So rather than them going, oh, I, I must get to that store and, and get my question answered before it closes, they can do it at anywhere at any point. And thinking about how how bots and automated workflows are are increasingly making this possible as well as that it puts merchants in the best position to to engage and create you know, positive conversational experiences with their customers on on three key use cases it's you know, tell me more about this product i'm not sure which product is the best one for me or i have a question about my my recent purchase and in all of those cases, you know, I want my questions to be addressed immediately. I'm using a chat tool. I'm having a conversation. I expect that conversation to be real time. And even a delay of a few minutes is going to be detrimental to, to my experience. And it provides more opportunities for, for, for businesses and merchants to engage and to speak to customers and, and capture more data and more insights and, and ultimately learn more about their customers along the way. And I think it provides that, that conversational social connection that we, that we miss ultimately when we, when we shop online. And I think that's becoming even more important now in a, a world that is still to a, a great extent uh, socially distancing. And I think that the key with this notion of becoming that, that virtual member of the in-store team and being able to engage with a consumer in the same way as you would in person. And for a merchant, the, the outcomes are the same. It reduces purchase indecision. It creates a positive experience for a, a customer and a, a greater chance of a, a repeat purchase. And, and ultimately means that the consumer comes out of that conversation 
feeling the same way about that experience as they would have if that conversation was to happen face to face in store. And again, just to to draw on some data, it's it's expected now. You know, the first person have found that 77% of consumers actually won't buy online unless live chat is available. And I certainly know that you know, if I want to speak to a business, online chat is is my go-to. That's the first thing that I I look for. And Forrester have found that you're just over half of customers will, in fact, abandon a transaction. So just fifty-five percent will abandon a transaction if they can't find an answer to a question. So to have again, in our example, web chat front and center on a site, you know, the equivalent of that ever-present member of of the install team, it creates a really compelling reason to to employ these services. And Keiko have found as well that, that just over half of consumers, so 51%, are, are more likely to go back to a business again following a previous positive interaction over chat. And the same research looking at it from a, a business perspective have found that 79% that of those using live chat have seen a, a positive effect, not just on loyalty, but of course on, on sales and revenue. And you know, I can certainly uh, attest to that with, with the brands that, that I've worked with. So I, I use web chat in my example, but really channel is almost irrelevant. You know, the, the same experience can and, and indeed should be created across Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, even SMS, and, and importantly, consumers should be able to switch channels as the context changes and as, as their, their context changes. And um, I guess to, to demonstrate that and to return to this image, imagine as a consumer being able to start a chat with a fashion brand on web chat on a laptop, such as the the image on the left and maybe you've seen an item that that you want but it's out of stock and so our friendly proactive ever-present store assistant pops up on screen and perhaps recommends you an alternative but instead you choose to to be notified when it's back in stock let's say via by whatsapp for example so the next day you're not on the laptop your your context has changed you're on the bus uh, on your mobile um, but you get a WhatsApp message telling you that your item is is back in stock. Here's a picture of it, and you know the, the technology is is moving to a place where you could even say, "Here's a button to pay for it straight away." You know, in the moment. Um, but with all of these these channels, importantly, it's also going. Here's a facility to reply to that message and chat with us over WhatsApp, as an example if you have any further questions. And that is that is really powerful because that experience is seamless regardless of, of the channel that the, 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 the consumer is, is using. And you know, indeed consumers are, are looking for real time messaging as their, their chosen way to hear from a business. Um, in this, this example here, Drift surveyed uh, 6,000 consumers in, in 2016. And, and you know, even back then, found that nine out of 10 consumers wanted to, to do it this way, wanted to interact with a business in this way. So how can conversational commerce give you that competitive advantage that, that is needed now? What are the, the three reasons why conversational commerce should be part of your strategy and why should that digital member of the, the in-store team be your next hire? I think one of the most important things for a business is being able to to manage these conversations at scale. You know, the the expectation of immediacy is so high that that failing to effectively do that is going to have a real kind of detrimental effect on the on the customer experience and the and the perception of of that business. And you know, we can talk about how how bots and automated processes can help with that. And you know, when it's done right, it opens up the the ability to build that trust at scale and the experience ultimately benefits because of it. And of course, by using data about customers in the conversation, businesses can tailor that conversation based on, on who they're talking to. So it could be that 
to you could entice shoppers with the promise and recommendation of a, a more effective beauty formula or or free shipping for a VIP if they spend that little bit more. But it's it's personalized messaging with the facility to have a one-to-one -one conversation that, that really builds the trust between a customer and a brand. I certainly know that when I want to ask a question about my phone contract, I can immediately get through to, to someone at the network directly from chat. Uh, on their website or or from within the chat to us function in their app and so I'm more likely to to contact them again via chat when it's time to upgrade or add some additional services and it allows you to build better experiences across the customer journey both in in real time during the conversation and, and also importantly post conversation so that could be a proactive you know how can i help pop up from a a web chat to ask questions and and to make recommendations that that convert a prospective customer of course then once they go on to make a purchase give them the option of channels to get order updates and notifications for example via via sms or, or whatsapp if if that's their their choice and, and their channel of choice which are then of course would then provide the facility to reply to that message and start a chat if any of the details of that transaction need to need to change or indeed maybe it's to give a a vip that extra something like a, a beauty skincare consultation or or personal shopping experience via video chat for example so from initial awareness through to purchase and an ongoing loyalty and advocacy there's an opportunity to have a conversation and deliver value through every stage of that of that customer life cycle i know in in the same way that a local store will get to know their customers over time and as they come back again and again for that unique sort of personalized experience you can combine that data and layer it with sentiment tone and, and, and understanding intent in conversations to to ultimately enhance what you already know about your customers to not only help inform future chats but also provide more personalized and targeted content across other channels outside of chat and outside of a conversation so just to, to summarize by by moving our purchase behavior online we've of course saved lots of time we have much more in the way of choice and we've benefited from from cheaper pricing and conversational commerce tools adds that layer to ensure that we don't lose the intimacy with a business that we used to have by going in store you know we can still have that valuable interaction with an in-store assistant whom we share our our needs with and who we rely upon as the experts to help us select the perfect product or to help us find the product that we're looking for or or even to give us you know, that peace of mind that our order is is on the way and and ultimately means that we we come back and again uh, again and again and of course beyond how likable you are how trustworthy you are it's ultimately how you make the customer feel at the end of that conversation so thank you very much please do uh check us out at digital.com and uh, happy to to connect via linkedin and happy to answer any any questions good thanks for that uh James, uh, a really great insight into uh, Autobots uh, takes me back to Transformers and Cybertron. <laughs> but we're moving into the world where it's such a, a key part. Um, I'll see if there's, there's not many questions that have come through. Uh, just give me a second and I'll see if there's anyone else. Yeah, there's, I guess, you know, um, we obviously seeing a lot more uptake of web chats and AI driven. Mm. Have we found an uplift in that in, in terms of the pandemic? Because, you know, you've obviously found people not being able to go into stores. So has that had a positive impact to, to, to the technology being uptaken by, you know, different merchants, etc. Yeah, I think so. I think that, that see, we've had to adapt very, uh, very quickly to, uh, to to that kind of changing environment, and you know, it's shifting it more to making sure that you are available when a 
a consumer wants to talk to you rather than them having to remember that you're open from you know, nine to five or or whatever it may be. And, and of course, you can't be there 24 seven. Um, so things like bots and, 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 and that kind of technology very much does help with that, very much helps to ensure that you are there 24 seven. And I think that brands that do it correctly have that combination of bot and human. You, you can see through very quickly if you are talking to a bot solely to a bot and you can't speak to an actual human and, and bots are great for um, the kind of the, the frequently asked questions. You know, if you can just open up a web chat and speak to a bot to find out where your order is, that's sort of gonna give you the answer quicker and it's gonna save resource on the other side. It's when those questions become perhaps a bit more specific and a bit more bespoke that you need that bot to human kind of handover. And of course, if there's a human that's not available, you know, setting the expectation and, 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 and doing something like, oh, you know, we're not here at the moment, but you know, can we contact you via SMS, via WhatsApp, whatever it might be the next day, and we can continue that conversation. And, and that conversation is, is kind of seamless between, between channels. Okay, no, excellent. Um, well, I think that's that's it from from our side. Um...